Loving Mary for me is kind of taking it back to the roots and just that classic sound that seems really timeless. I've never been in a band where by the second half of the first chorus, everybody knows the chorus. So by the second chorus and the third chorus, it's like we've sang it two or three times already. That only comes around once in a lifetime. I've known Marty Fredrickson for years and I've always wanted to be in a duet band with him, like him and I singing some country songs. And I was like, you know what, forget the duet. You know what the world needs right now is another Fleetwood Mac. Girl, let me guess. There ain't nobody. Loving Mary began for me when I was in a writing room with Susie McNeil. She was this awesome like rocker chick. I just really liked her whole trip. And when we talked to Rebecca about being in the band, she was all about it. Her husband, Alicia, he was all about it too. We all just kind of started hanging out at Marty's place and we would jam and we just sort of joked and said, wouldn't it be funny if we started a band? And we did. <laughs> From that, Loving Mary came. Our first gig ever was only last year, and it was backing up Steven Tyler. He was playing in Washington, and Marty's been friends with him for years, and he called Marty and said, I need a band, and Marty said, I've got the band for you. It's kind of the saving grace for me, doing something totally different from songwriting and producing and got together with some good friends of mine that really wanted to do something different. You know, they had their own solo careers. Susie had a career going, Rebecca Lynn Howard, she's winning damn Grammys. And just her spirit and her positive way of thinking just brings so much to it. So I had some cuts and that kind of got the ball rolling with my writing career. And a couple years later, I wrote a song called Forgive, and that launched my artist career. It was a big hit for me. Marty brings all his talent to the band. I mean, he is a world-renowned A-list producer. He really can get a sense of what a great hit song is. Mari's the big brother I've ever had, you know, and a legend who became my friend. Oh, baby, we got love. Oh, the first hit I had was with this band, Brother Kane. We wrote a song called Got No Shame. But John Kalodner, he heard the song and he thought, wow, Aerosmith needs a song like this. And I wrote this song called Nine Lives. And I had a chance to work with them on their next record, Just Push Play, and I wrote a pop song called Jaded. Alicia Hoffman is a wild man. He brings so much energy to the stage, to this band. Alicia is the animal of Love and Mary that if you do not have, you do not have the band. I've had songs cut by Shania Twain and the Dixie Chicks. I was lucky enough to write a band to me that was uh, in country song. I'm gonna get to you, you're gonna I think Susan McNeil is the, the brother and sister that I've never had. The chicken rock so balls to the wall. I guess I would be familiar to the world from a uh, reality show that I was on in 2005 called Rockstar in Excess. It's so funny with Susie, man. Her voice uh, singing on all the records that I've done, and there's nothing like it. I've never felt anything like this. It just feels so right. And the energy on stage is something that's undeniable. It seems like I don't even really have to try. I just wake up and if I gotta write a song, it seems to like be the right song for the band. It's energetic, it's organic, it's a refreshing sound. We just want people to have a good time. You know, it's Loving Mary, that's what it's all about.